Old X. Codex Tyranids, 4th edition. Coil. Written by Phil Kelly and Andy Chambers. With additional text by Andy Hoare and Graham McNeil. Pages 22 and 23. Narrated by R. J. Bailey. With great thanks to Alistair for donating this copy of Codex Tyranids. A wave of nausea hit Lieutenant Coyle as he left the dim confines of the Medicaid tent and staggered, gripping onto the tent pole with a palsied hand as his stomach cramped in sudden pain. The hair was hot and noxious, a bitter acidic taste catching in the back of his throat, and the bright sunlight made his eyes water painfully. He shaded his eyes with his other hand and stared upwards, seeing yellow clouds like infected lungs and the swirling, unnatural sky beyond them as a diseased red. It had been like this for the last six days, ever since the Tyranids had come. Sir? said a voice behind him, and he tore his gaze from the evil skies. Turning to see Edgar, their medical officer, though in truth he was little more than a young ensign who had helped out the trained medical officer before he had been dragged, screaming, into the sky by a tyrannid gargoyle. "'What is it, son?' asked Coyle. "'I really don't think you ought to go back out, sir. You're in no shape to fight.' "'I don't have a choice,' said Coyle. "'Who else is going to do it?' "'You'll die if you try and fight today,' said the young Enzin. "'Son, we're already dead,' snapped Coyle. Fighting's all we have left. Edgar shook his head slowly. The Emperor protects. We'll be all right. Coyle bit back a venomous reply and simply nodded. Aye, the Emperor protects, he agreed. Turning on his heel, he left the young man to his dreams of rescue. He limped through the compound, a slick of infected blood seeping from the bandage around his thigh where a hormigaunt had slashed him. He saw Turles, his voxman, cycling through the channels on the caster to try and raise someone, anyone, but Coyle already knew it was hopeless. There was no one left alive on Corianus. They were all that was left, perhaps two hundred wounded, hungry and exhausted men and women. As Coyle painfully climbed the rusted iron ladder to the walls, he scanned the stark walls, dotted with small clusters of soldiers talking in low voices, so tired they could hardly stand. Some were gambling, an edge of hysteria in their infrequent laughter. Some were hunched over, writing letters to loved ones that would never be read. Some were huddled under rags, trying to snatch some sleep, or rocking back and forth as the desperation of their situation sank in. He had not lied when he spoke to Edgar. They were already dead. They just hadn't lain down yet. Coyle leaned awkwardly on the wall head, its plasteel structure blistered and melted where corrosive alien poisons had eaten it away. It burned to the touch, but Coyle was past caring as he looked out over the blasted landscape before the fort. What had once been a dusty, arid plain was now a perverted landscape of grasping alien fronds and tall, organic chimneys that vented a toxic miasma of spores into the hot air with grotesque internal spasms. The rusted hulls of gutted Chimera and Lehman rust tanks littered the ground, corroded almost to ruin and infested with loathsome red creepers and mosses. They looked as though they had been there for decades, though it had only been two days since Commander Lurton had led the attempted at breakout. The previously open killing ground was now alive with tall grass and oozing alien vegetable matter that had sprung up in the wake of the Tyranid Horde. Flamer units had tried to keep the area before the walls clear, but when it became apparent that the unnatural flora grew back just as quickly, he had ordered them to stop. The precious Prometheum would be better served by killing Tyranids. 
He heard a hacking, wet cough from nearby, and saw a pair of guardsmen tending to the recumbent form of Commissar Bryant. The black uniformed figure had once been the terror of the Bellis Corona 55th, a giant of a man who seemed impervious to the weapons of the enemy, and put a fire in the bellies of the warriors around him with his impassioned oratory and blazing pistols. The commissar's skin was pale and blotchy, and his uniform hung from his gaunt, wasted frame. He coughed up black, foamy wads of what Edgar had told him used to be his lungs. All the men were suffering from the effects of the microscopic organisms carried on the fetid air. Rashes, sores, blistered skin and burning eyes. But Bryant had suffered the worst, his legendary reputation no protection against insidious alien poisons. He turned away as he heard a shout from further along the wall, his blood surging around his body as he made out the words of a pointing guardsman. Incoming! Tyranids! Coyle shaded his eyes and looked into the sky once more. Undulating black clouds drew nearer, moving against the wind, and Coyle knew that this was it. This was the end. Stand to! shouted Coyle, shucking his las gun from his shoulder and checking the magazine. Full, but he only had another three charges. Every man to the walls! Even as the cloud of monsters dropped towards them, he could see the tall grasses before the fort ripple with frenzied movement. In the distance, towering monsters stamped towards them, shrieking cries rasping from bony plates around their fanged jaws. Before them, leaping, bounding creatures with scything claws and chitinous carapaces screeched as they swept towards the compound in eerily coordinated waves. Mark your targets and fire at will! shouted Coyle, though he knew that against such a numberless horde there was no way to miss. He raised his las gun and fired into the mass of creatures, hearing the heavy bark of the quad-barreled Hydra batteries as they opened up on the flying gargoyles. Las fire spat from the walls, each shot punching through the body of an alien monster, but Coyle could see that it wouldn't be enough. Even if every guardsman's shot hit and killed one of the Tyranids, there would still be thousands left to finish them off. He kept shooting, aiming for the largest creatures, hoping to disrupt whatever control they might have over the smaller ones. The charge indicator on his las gun flashed red, and he dropped to his haunches to reload when a spray of emerald green slime impacted on the wall beside him. Men shrieked in agony as they were engulfed in the ooze, and Coyle cried out as hissing droplets of acid burned his skin. Screaming men dropped from the walls as flesh sloughed from their bones, and Coyle recognized Turles, the voxman, collapsing in a boneless heap. The screeching of the horde was deafening, but even over their inhuman cries, Coyle could hear the clanging of their claws against the wall as they climbed. He rose to his feet, shutting out the stench of burned flesh as the first of the tyranid organisms reached the ramparts and time slowed as he stared at the enemy. Its hissing head was utterly alien, ridged and gnarled, with a hard, glossy sheen to it, its eyes dead and lifeless, like a doll's. Its jaw opened wide in a screech of alien malice, and Coyle could see that its mouth was filled with row upon row of jagged, razor-sharp fangs. He thrust his las gun between its teeth and blasted the back of its head off as yet more scrambled to the ramparts. The wall shook as a pair of giant carnifexes with enormous, crushing claws smashed into the gate, and Coyle was hurled backward by the impact. He climbed to his feet as a hissing hormigaunt landed beside him, and he kicked out, feeling fangs break beneath his boot heel. The creature skidded away, but another leapt over it and plunged its claws towards him. Coyle leapt backwards to avoid the disemboweling sweep, stepping onto thin air as he fell from the embattled ramparts. 
He slammed into the hard rockcrete of the compound floor, crying out as the breath was driven from him by the impact and feeling his ribs break. He tried to push himself upright, but searing pain flared in his chest and his breath caught as he realized at least one of his lungs was punctured. Screams of dying men filled his senses as he watched the ramparts swarm with alien bodies, long, curving organic blades slashing his soldiers to pieces. The gateway bulged inwards as a massive claw punched through and began ripping it down. Coyle coughed blood as he felt the ground beneath him heave upwards and yelled in pain as he dragged himself away from the cracking, splintering rockcrete. Spurts of grey, choking dust billowed upwards, and Coyle saw a serpentine creature haul its glistening bulk from the tear in the ground. Chitinous claws unsheathed from fleshy folds in its ridged carapace, and it emitted a terrifying screech as yet more bulging cracks reared upwards in the ground. Coyle reached for his pistol, but the ravener was on him in a flurry of stabbing blades, before he could even draw it from his holster. You have been listening to Oldex, Codex Tyranids, 4th Edition, Coil, written by Phil Kelly and Andy Chambers, with additional text by Andy Hoare and Graham McNeil, pages 22 to 23, narrated by R. J. Bailey. With great thanks to Alistair for donating this copy of Codex Tyranids. Thank you to Phil Kelly, Andy Chambers, Andy Hoare, and Graham McNeil for writing the fiction I grew up with. If you've enjoyed this, please leave a review where you found it, or like, share, and subscribe on YouTube, depending how you're listening. This production, like all of Oldex, is entirely unofficial and uncommercial, from an out of print publication is a derivative work with all copyrights owned by Games Workshop, and is a celebration of the hobby and lore I grew up with. If you have suggestions for other old Codex fiction for me to narrate on this podcast, you can comment, contact me on Twitter at rjbailey, or email robertjbailey at gmail.com. Links are in the show description. <laughs>